Today on Force 20, we're going to build the crossbow powered version of the Adderini. Uh oh. Two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna try something a little different this time. Let's start with looking at the file structure. I'm here, I have a folder that I made called Adderini. I dumped the zip file that I downloaded into that folder and then I extracted it. So when we go in here and we look in the subfolders, we see that there's a bunch of different versions, obviously. There's the one for the crossbow limbs, there's one for the rubber powered, and then there's a folder for making the bowstring jig and the serving tool. And then there's another folder for the mini adder by Faramir. So we've already made the rubber powered version, and this time we're gonna start with the crossbow limb version. And the reason I'm going through this is it seems like in the comments on the rubber powered version video that I made, there was some confusion about what parts you're supposed to use. So if I want to make the crossbow limbs and I want it to be a crossbow as opposed to the version that's legal in places where crossbows are illegal, I want to have all the parts except for the ones that say no expo. So the no expo means the crank arm is held by your pinky and it doesn't lock. So it meets the law in various countries, I guess. So we're not gonna make that one. We're gonna make the one that actually locks just like the rubber powered one. So basically I wanna print everything in this folder with some exceptions. Let's see, I don't need the wall mount and printing the stock is a choice whether you wanna make a stock or not. So the first thing you would print is the limbs pressure washer and then the body, the string stopper. Let's see, pretty much everything in here, I think cocking lever lock, cocking rod, until you get down to the optional front elastic pads. These are only needed if you're not going to use a piece of rubber or something else to pad the bow. And so the body ones, just this one with the no expo, I wouldn't print. And if you want to put the stock on, you don't need the plug um, and you don't need the wall mount unless you want the wall mount, and there it is. If you want to print the one without the rubber pads, there's parts for that. But the other thing to do is decide which of these three folders, one of these three folders is going to be the next series. So if you have a, say a Prusa Mini, you could use the 180 by 180. There's more parts and there will be more assembly. If you're using an i3 like me i'm going to go with the 200 by 200 even though my bed is 250 by 250 because some of the parts on the 300 by 300 just don't fit so when i go in here i'm going to go through and look i think there's very few things you need to print everything in here except the stuff that says these two that have no expo the caulking lever and the pistol body unless you're making the no expo version and then you're going to use those and not the other ones not the left rear one for example. And that's basically it. All the letters in the brackets mean is the color of the filament that you're supposed to use. And it's entirely optional. You can print the whole thing in one color. You can use any color scheme that you want. It just says if you want it to look like the ones that are in the picture with the magazine being one color and the trigger and the, um, the arrow holder being another color, that's if you use this ABC scheme and pick three colors that's that'll work just fine or two colors i guess it is in this one and that's basically it all you got to do is print all of these that are in this folder and pick one of these folders based on your printer size now once you have all the parts printed if you go to the legolini website you can look at the adderini pistol pdf and assembly instructions for the crossbow limbs version start on page 70. This is a great manual, 107 pages of instructions, but it's for all the different versions, has a ton of options, lots of pictures, and it's very clear. Just follow the steps right through. When you get to this crossbow version, I notice it basically says assemble the body as if you've already done the rubber powered version and you kind of know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing and this is the first one that you're building, the crossbow one, you just go to the, the beginning and the rubber version and use that 
to assemble the body pieces if you happen to need instructions. So that's all there is to it with the instructions and the files. Now that we've figured out which file versions to use and picked our colors, it's time to print. I'm not gonna waste too much of your time showing you a 3D printer making parts. The total build time is around 80 hours and I don't have the hardware that moves the print head out of the way and triggers the camera between every layer. So I can't get the fancy shots of the parts just appearing to grow out of the bed plate. You're stuck with good old GoPro time lapse. Besides, if you're watching this, you probably have a 3D printer already and you know what parts creation looks like. I'm using a 0.2 nozzle, 40% infill with stock settings in Prusa Slicer. Supports are required for some of the parts. It's obvious which ones they are, but if you're confused about whether you use supports or not, just tell the slicer to do supports everywhere and let it figure out if they're required. The only parts I had trouble with were the string stoppers. Uh, they require laying down the outline of lots of small holes in the first layer, and for some reason they kept failing on me. Uh, so to fix that, I just turned my bed temperature up by about 5 degrees, and that fixed my first layer adhesion problems. Assembly starts with the cleaning up of all the parts removing the build supports, and making sure that mating surfaces are clean and flat. This right here is a little three millimeter parts tray that I printed. This is probably one of the best uses I can think of for 3D printing, is making little custom parts holders, clips, things like that that are small, organizers, you print these up fast. You can find files online for this kind of thing, super easy. Instead of having a big pile all it, or leaving them in the bags, now I have the tray, I can grab exactly what I need when I need it. Okay, I got all my parts cleaned up. There's all the supports. And we're gonna get ready to glue. I'm gonna use a little super glue this time instead of the plastic welder, because hopefully it'll be a little bit less messy. The parts that need to be glued are the caulking lever, parts one and two, the magazine sides, front and rear, and the pistol side body parts. The pistol body parts are actually three pieces. Put the side front and side rear parts together, then add the pistol body covers, which are both glued and screwed. The crank arm also gets bolted after gluing. The body and the magazine parts are mirrored or handed, depending on which terminology you prefer. So you have to make sure that you have all the left and the right side parts identified before starting your assembly. I'm just checking to make sure the seams are all as tight as possible and I can see through the holes to make sure everything's lined up. That's all it takes. Now, this one will clamp and I'm right across the joint, clamp the two pieces together, and that will keep the plate down until it's fully dry. And there are the five pieces. That need to be glued if you're using the middle the 200 by 200 files all done all right the next step is the screws that go through the plate and hold them together and the easiest way to do this i think is to put the, the nut in first, hold it in with your finger, and then put the screw through. No need to over tighten, just make sure that you're 
all the way through. Before I screw this one, I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the uh, the overglue and where it stuck to the mat. And a little light sand. And then it's the same again. Okay, next we're going to do the magazine assembly. We're going to put the spring in. So, where I shop, it's difficult to get the exact spring that you want. This is pretty much an 8mm spring, but as you can see, it's twice as long as I need. So, I'm just going to cut it there. And to do that, all I did was pull the string apart a little bit, and I'm just going to grab it with two pairs of needle nose and fatigue it right where I want it to break. There we go. And I can bend that piece back. Okay, and this is where I find that adding the little nipple on the trigger side of the seat just makes it a lot easier to put the two halves together without the spring going spring. Okay, I don't think it's necessary to mess around with the clamp. The two pieces lay pretty flat. And once you have this screw in, it's not going to separate enough to let the spring go. You can see there's the, the trigger returns just fine. You can see the catch fully moves out of the way. So you're good to go. All right, now it's time to install the caulking rod. So here's one that I made where even with supports, it just got, you can see it's kind of screwed up. So that's the case where I've made another one. This one you can see is a lot better. I've already sanded the side there. Now, for me, finding a three millimeter grub screw in the hardware store is impossible. Um, it's a specialty screw. I'd have to order it and I'm not really keen on ordering a three millimeter screw. So basically I'm going to use a much longer screw and then I'm going to cut it off with a dremel. So we're going to go ahead and get it started in here. I think. And I have not put a drill bit through this hole. I just cleaned it out with a little pokey because I actually want it to be tight so that the screw has plenty of engagement. And I'm just going to put it through until I can see it. And then I'm going to back it out a little bit so it's just flush with the surface. I'm going to put the caulking rod in and hold it down with my finger. And I have a finger over the hole on the other side, over here, so I can feel when the screw just starts to protrude. I can feel it engage, starting to engage on the other side. And you can just feel it starting to push out. See it there. And I can take my razor blade and just clean up all the stuff that's been pushed out of the way. And then back the screw off until it's just flush. And then, let's see if I can get this on camera. Sort of limited by my cord length here. I'm going to cut off the screw with the Dremel and a cutoff wheel, and it's best done quickly so that nothing gets too hot. There it is. 
see it's flush there, flush there. I'm kind of SOL if I ever want to get it out of there. I suppose I could cut it again with the Dremel and put a little notch in it and get it out with a flathead or something. Let's see if we can clean some of this out. But you see how quickly even just the sparks from the Dremel will mar the surface. So I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper. Clean that up a little bit. And to get in into that inside corner, I can take a popsicle stick and then use that to press down so that I can clean up that inside joint. So when you're modifying these springs, the big thing is just to make sure that you get the full range of motion and that there's no part of the spring that's binding up or preventing a catch from going where it needs to go. You can see it comes Now for the next one, I can't find any eight by 20 by one springs, but this is an eight by 40 by half. So it should be equivalent force. Let's see if we can get it in there. Probably ought to put the nut in first. And then the spring. Okay, so that didn't make any sense because there was no room for the bolt head. So I went and checked the instructions and it turns out I'm just supposed to be threading the screw through into the other side. So make sure you're going to go all the way through. Try it again, spring.
Here's my spring. This is not actually from a clicky pen. It's from a set of springs I have. So it's a little bit long and it's not easy to get it set up. But I don't want to cut it because it's tiny and I'll end up mangling it. So the thing to do This is a little bit fiddly. It's actually kind of annoying the way this thing is designed, where there ought to be a hole back here with a screw that I can thread in to set the spring tension on our actual pistol. That's how it would be. Nobody would be trying to do this crazy fit the thing in the... There we go. Now I can compress it with the ruler. And the ruler is thin enough that it will fit in there, even with the spring and all the parts. But that's something I would definitely recommend a redesign for. I would just make this entire section solid make the hole go all the way through, design a recess to fit uh, the, the appropriate size screw, and then you end up with a much easier build. And I'm gonna skip putting in the plug because I may want to put a stock on later. And once you put the plug in, it's very difficult to get it out. All right, now we're going to assemble the body. The first thing is to make sure you remember to drop in these nuts. They'll likely fall out while you're assembling. Maybe not that one. And then we're going to go ahead and put everything together. And all I'm doing there is making sure it's flat in the hole. And all my holes are punched out. See, told you they'd come out. And once again, Frankly, it's a little dumb to me that that's not a through hole with a nut on it. Because it makes it very difficult to set that one up as the first nut, which is what you want. So that the catch is held in place and can't float around in there. And every time these things are going to fall out, which is frankly super annoying. And the way around that, let's just put a little super glue in the hole. Just 
So that's the screw side. That's the nut side. Also, it wouldn't kill him to put some alignment tabs on the inside so that you don't have all these parts sliding around when you're trying to find, line up the holes. And a simple little tab on the inside of this that fit into a slot on the inside of the grips would solve that problem quickly and easily. And it's literally meant to be the exact same screw. I don't see any reason that there couldn't be a nut there instead of threading into the plastic body where you're almost guaranteed to strip it. Okay, so I finally figured out what my problem is with the front end. And it is that these are not 3 millimeter; they're 440. Because there was not 3 millimeter available in the length that I needed. So I switched to 440, which is close. But the nuts, I'll show you. So this one is 440, this one is three millimeter. You can see there's a little bit of difference. And so of course these nuts won't fit in here. So the way to get around that is like this. I'm just gonna take the nut, put it on a piece of wire, heat it up for a second. Really doesn't have to be very warm. Just get it heated up. Use the wire to got it in place. And you can see it's set in there with the heat. So that's the advantage of using 3D printed materials is that it's super easy to make heat related adjustments. Okay, again, because I have a hard time getting the exact right length of bolts, uh, I cut off the ends of these ones with the Dremel and I'm just smoothing down the cut surfaces so that they're not jagged. I have skipped over the sliding the crossbow limb through. You're going to figure out what your padding is and get that set up. And I'm just going to fly through attaching the crank arm. The big thing to keep in mind is that if you build this with the crossbow limb, it is extremely powerful. And it does distort the body of the Adarini a little bit. And it can sometimes distort the body enough that it will jump the trigger and release the bowstring. Uh, that's something to be extremely careful about. Do not ever point this at anything when there's an arrow in it that you don't want to shoot. Do not get your hands in front of it. Don't even get your fingers in between the bowstring and the bow because it will slap pretty hard. Uh, I had that happen once. Um, I think with the addition of the crossbow limb, it goes from being a toy to something a little bit more dangerous and it behooves you to take more care with it. So here it is complete. I have fired it a few times. It's working great. 
The crossbow version solves all the problems that I mentioned with regard to the rubber powered version. It's consistent, accurate, repeatable, and reliable. You can leave it cocked for as long as you like because the steel crossbow is never going to take a set and its power is not affected by temperature or how many times you've shot it. For the same reason, the draw weight never changes, which makes it accurate. It's powerful enough that I think the range and the penetration are good enough for small or medium-sized game. And with broadheads, you could even attempt something like a hog. It's still very light, and it would make a great pack bow. I really like it, and I enjoyed making it. And I hope you guys enjoy making it too. Okay, that's it. I hope you guys found that to be helpful. And for the record, I really did put the dart straight through the garage door. The crossbow version of this thing is incredibly powerful and not a little bit dangerous. So be careful out there. <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.